Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online video where today I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of vehicles in GTA 5 and Online which are either rare, hard to obtain, impossible to obtain, as well as some of the weird and wonderful vehicles that exist in the GTA 5 game. Now you may be looking at the impressive lineup that I have here and may have a few questions about some of the vehicles in this lineup, but to do this video I'm basically just going to start from the beginning and then work my way up along the lineup of vehicles. Now I won't be showing off every single vehicle that you see right here, since most of them are just special variants of already existing vehicles such as the ones that are covered in snow. Anyways, with that over with, let's take a look at some of the vehicles in this lineup that uh, really stand out from the rest to say the least. The first vehicle that we're going to be taking look at is a car that's actually possible to be obtained legitimately. All you have to do is be a returning player from the previous generation version of the game. It's basically a ballista compact with the Go Go Space Monkey livery pasted on it. For those who don't know what Go Go Space Monkey is, it's a fictional in-world video game that first made an appearance in GTA San Andreas, and has been part of the GTA universe ever since. The reason I'm showing off this car is because I didn't even know this thing existed before I took a look at it here today and I think this car is just incredibly cool to look at and is definitely worthy of being the returning player only vehicle that it is. Now anyone who's ever played the special mission to unlock the discount for the Runa 2000 car will probably have seen this vehicle already. You'll see it on the back of a wastelander that you have to get back to the boys to complete the mission. What may surprise you is, is that this isn't a prop, it's an actual functioning vehicle that you can drive around. Rather humorously, the wheels on the thing don't even spin around as you drive in the car, but you can clearly tell that it's one hell of a drift machine because you can just tell from that camber of the wheels. I mean, that is some serious camber. Now this vehicle, I'm sure at least most of you have seen before, it's the car that everyone knows if seen is a clear sign that a modder is nearby. But the car itself is actually pretty interesting. It's based off a dune buggy and has a unique feature that only this car has. Every time you press the horn button, the car plays a variety of different space themed sound effects and of course they're all horns that you can't legitimately put on your own vehicles. It also has green headlights and according to the GTA wiki, the car has some special anti-gravity and gliding abilities, but uh, from what I've seen, the car flies through the air just like any normal vehicle, so maybe I'm missing out something? Let me know in the comments if I'm missing out something here. Anyway, Anyways, moving on, for those of you who thought that the Journey was the only campervan-esque vehicle in the game, then you would be wrong, as there is indeed a proper campervan in the game. I'm not really sure why Rockstar have made this unavailable in GTA Online, because this thing is, is really cool. Perhaps due to the fact that this van has absolutely nothing to bring to the table when it comes to practicality. Kinda like this thing. It only holds two people, which makes it about as practical as a bike, but it's also really, really slow which makes even the hunk of junk journey more practical than this thing, because that thing's able to carry six people. What's worse is that unlike the journey, which has a rendered interior to the vehicle, if you look inside the camper van, there's absolutely nothing. It wasn't designed to be looked at from the inside, which is kind of disappointing, but mm, oh well. Moving on, this is another vehicle which I didn't know existed until I made this video. The Clown Van, featuring Fiddler the Clown. Of course you'd expect nothing less from Rockstar naming the clown Fiddler, but anyways, the van, despite its questionable exterior, is actually pretty darn quick. Its acceleration and top speed seems a little higher than that of most other vans. I guess you would need a pretty quick van to get you the hell out of there after being caught fiddling with the kids posing as a clown. From one funny looking vehicle to one that's a little more serious. This is the tunnel drill that you can see in story mode for drilling tunnels. There's not really much to say about this thing unfortunately, like a lot of other vehicles in this lineup, they don't really serve any functional purpose other than existing as a prop for use to immerse the player in the story mode of GTA 5, and the tunnel drill is one such vehicle. There's no way to turn on the stonebreaker, and the vehicle itself is slow as hell, so there's not really much to the vehicle. Moving on. Now, the dock handler, possibly the tallest land vehicle in the game. Unlike the tunnel driller, you can actually play around with the magnetic carrier. Well, mm, sort of. You can move it up and down, but when I tried moving some containers that I spawned in, it didn't seem to work, so unfortunately this is another kind of pointless vehicle when outside of a pre-scripted mission. Moving on, let's take a look at... a lift. <laughs> yeah. 
These are technically vehicles in the game engine, but as you can probably guess, all they really do is serve as a method in which to act as a proper lift in GTA story mode, as well as a prison for modders to use against troll players in GTA Online. There's no way to drive the thing around, but uh, yeah, it's a lift. Moving on, Field Masters. Although you can acquire these legitimately in GTA Online, I really wanted to show off the normal version as well as the snow covered version for when it's used in North Yankton with its snow setting. What you can't obtain, however, is the rake tool that the Field Master can tow. It just magnetically clips onto the back of the thing like you're using the force from Star Wars and you can go ahead and drag it around. It doesn't seem to do anything, but uh, hey, if you need a prop for a pharma scene when recording a video, then at least we we have this thing. <laughs> eh. Moving on. What I couldn't spawn in was a tractor that is also in the game. I'm sure a lot of you will have seen this thing hanging around from time to time. Moving on, let's take a look at the forklift. Again, another vehicle which should be in GTA Online, especially with all the recent content updates that we've been getting since last year. Just like the dock handler, you can actuate the forks up and down at will and can even lift up cars. Okay, scratch that, you can't lift up cars. Perhaps something a little lighter? No! Moving on, we have the lawnmower, which is about as exciting as you might imagine. Moving on. Now, I know what you may be thinking. What the hell is this thing? This ain't a vehicle. Well, actually, this is indeed a quote-unquote drivable vehicle. This is Ortega's trailer, and I hope I said that name right. It's a prop used in the story mission Mr. Phillips, where it basically gets rammed by Trevor's trailer into a river. Now, as I said, this is technically a vehicle because when you press the Enter Vehicle button, you actually get inside the trailer. The only way you can see yourself actually driving the trailer, quote-unquote, is by using a free camera tool, but, uh... Yeah, perhaps it's had to be classed as a vehicle so that the physics engine could work for the mission when you have to ram the thing into the river. That's my explanation anyways. Moving on, let's take a look at some of the trailers that GTA 5 has to offer. Except for the one with the yacht on top, all of the trailers shown can be towed by pretty much any truck that you can find in the game. Even the Phantom Wedge. Just reverse on up to the trailer and you're good to go. These are only some of the trailers that you can find. Of course, I'm only showing the more rare and non-available ones in GTA Online, just for reference. There's one where there's a bunch of supercars on top. This will be part of the Import-Export DLC due to all the prop cars featured on the trailer are ones from Import-Export. When you drive at speed and weave left and right in this thing, you can really get the thing to fishtail. It's kind of funny. I tried to hook up the trailer with the yacht, but as you can see, it's impossible to even get the thing lined up, never mind hooking it on. And even when using mods to forcefully put it on top of the truck, it just kind of slides off again. So clearly this trailer was only meant to be used during the first Michael mission, where you're trying to get your boat back from the bad guys. Moving on, here's a quick look at the train that's been stopped, as well as some of the trailers that can be attached to it at random. But the thing I really want to show you, and at the same time offer you some practical advice, is this, the tram. At first, when you see it on its own like this, it's not very harmful, but if you climb inside from the back, you'll find that for some reason your character automatically sits down in one of the seats, unable to get back up again. So if you see a tram like this just lying around in free mode, stay the hell away unless you want a soft locky game. Moving on to the final land vehicles on the lineup, we have the Coast Guard, an SUV which isn't really anything to write home about, though I do feel like it should be included in GTA Online, just like the police bike. This, I have no clue whatsoever why this isn't in GTA Online. Really, I have no clue. If cops could use these bikes, they could probably have a chance on keeping up with some of the faster cars that players drive around in GTA Online. But uh, yeah, they just don't ride them. It's baffling, really. I think the only reason for not having the bikes in GTA Online is if maybe there was an issue with online causing a glitch or whatever with police bikes and they just couldn't include them in the game. But without word from Rockstar themselves, we'll probably never know. So that's pretty much all of the land vehicles covered. There's no sea vehicles that aren't included in GTA Online, so let's move on to aircraft. First of all, let's take a quick look at the Sky Crane, which is basically the same idea as the Cargo Bob, only it can't actually carry anything. Not without being pre-scripted to do so, anyways. So basically, the Sky Crane is just a really large helicopter that can't do much of anything. If you want more info about the Sky Crane, I made a full video on the thing, so if you want to check that out, be my guest. 
I've also made videos on the blimp as well as the cargo plane which is basically the largest vehicle in all of the GTA series. With my current tools that I have I don't think I'm able to open up the cargo bay door as well as the nose so the plane's pretty much useless to me right now. Though I do have footage of it being used to its full extent in another video. What I haven't done a video on though is the jet. Yeah that's all it's called really, the jet. The jet is a slightly smaller personnel carrier plane which is more reminiscent of what you'd see flying overhead in real life. It's got no interior and can only carry two people so it's basically this game's version of the AT400 from GTA San Andreas. It's completely pointless as an aircraft but it's still cool to fly this thing around Los Santos and do stunts with the thing like loops, rolls and knife edges. All of which this plane can do with no problem. So that's pretty much it for all the rare and obscure vehicles that are in GTA 5 and online. Let us know which vehicle you found the most interesting and also make sure to share some facts about these vehicles yourselves if you know anything about them that I didn't cover in the video. And hey, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Pyron Gaming channel for loads more videos coming to you very soon. See you around everyone.